Eric Flack is standing by in Deanwood where a public hearing is about to get underway. But we begin with Delia Gonsalves at the Wilson Building where Chief Newsham responded to her reporting about one of those questionable searches. Delia, good evening. Good evening, Adam. The chief was grilled for more than three hours by members of the city council, faced some tough questions, and then stood for a news conference with us where we received some more tough questions and, as you said, spoke directly about the exclusive information we gave you yesterday and that backyard search, that cell phone video we will show you in just moments. He faced very tough questions, including from Vince Gray, who represents the ward where the Price family live and where that search took place. You know, we have seen a couple of videos that you have highlighted. The chief is talking about the cell phone video we showed you last night at 11, showing officers Whitehead and Gupton searching this northeast backyard. No warrant, no announcement, no explanation. And this is not just any home. This is where Jeffrey Price lived with his mother. Hey, sir, I, want, I don't want you on my property. It's the 22 year old who was killed when his illegal dirt bike collided with the cruiser in early May. This search happened days after his death. Today, Councilmember Vince Gray of Ward 7 takes the chief to task about that search. A police spokesperson telling us that officers were following a tip that someone dumped a gun in the area. I, I felt very uncomfortable with the video that I saw, and I have to say up front. You should have been, up, you should have been angry. I was, and, and I got to tell you that we don't uh, believe that the officers had any knowledge that it involved that that search of that property involved the Price family, but that doesn't excuse. That, that doesn't excuse. Yeah. Them saying, where could they answer the question while they were there? The lack of communication. I agree. I the officers are out of the GRU, but back on the street, I'm told back in six and seven D, which puts mm, them. I don't know what districts they're in. You are. But it, they are six. Okay. It puts them in the community that felt. Yeah. They were violent. And and the Just thing is, well. You know, one of the things that we have to deal with is we have uh, our employees that are, were allegedly involved in misconduct. We have seen the video and we can all draw assumptions from that. We're going to conduct an investigation. If we're able to sustain the misconduct uh, that most of us are assuming occurred in that video, uh, then they will be dealt with. The chief says they're in a tough spot trying to address the needs of the community who want police in their area to stop the drug dealing. Of course, though, balancing that with uh, not violating people's constitutional rights. He says it's a delicate balance. They're trying their very best, and he says he is committed to holding these officers accountable. However, he says these videos, as inflammatory as they are, are simply snapshots of some possible misconduct and does not represent all of MPD. The Price family, they are filing suit, filing a complaint with the ACLU about that search of their backyard. We're live at the Wilson Building, Delia Gonzalez, WUSA 9. And we'll now just wait and see if any of these discussions today actually initiate change. Delia, thank you. That hearing was the first of two today. A second one is going on right now in one of the communities most impacted by this. Investigative reporter Eric Flack is live at the Deanwood Recreation Center. And Eric, what's the turnout like there? Leslie, it's going to be a big turnout. People are just now filing in. That morning hearing you referenced actually went so long that everybody's a little bit late making it across town to this part of the city to actually get this thing going. Once they do get it going, they expect a passionate crowd. A number of people in this community have signed up to speak. The one group that is not invited tonight is the D.C. Police Department. The council member, Charles Allen, who arranged all this, as well as many community groups like the ACLU, D.C have specifically asked the police department and specifically police chief Peter Newsham to stay away because they want people to be able to feel like they can speak freely and the police chief has agreed to do that. Many of the people here will be sharing their personal stories and advocating for change about the way the D.C. Police Department polices this community and others in Ward 7 and 8. And those stories are very similar to the ones we have been reporting on in our stop and frisk reporting that dates back a year now. These images, a window into the anger and outrage some people in the Deanwood community have towards D.C. police and the force with which those same officers are pushing back 
all brought on by the release of that now infamous cell phone video recorded in the exact same spot June 13th of a stop and frisk of young black men, many here called unconstitutional. What's it called, bro? WUSA 9 first brought videos like that to light as part of our year-long investigation, D.C. Police Stop and Frisk. Come on, man. Come on, man. Hold you got the finger, man. Our investigation revealed eight out of ten people stopped and frisked by D.C. police are black, even though African Americans make up less than half the city's population, and that those stops can be indiscriminate, often based on vague descriptions of young African American men and women. This is my license. I'm a pharmacist, right? But I get stopped all the time, and because of that, I have to show this. It was the stories of people like pharmacist Alexander Oladell that bothered us most. Two white cars, they come up to me and they uh, they put me in handcuffs and I'm over at the dashboard like this. And the whole time I was, I was, I don't know why I did this, but I was literally pleading my case. Oh, I'm a pharmacist, I'm a pharmacist student, I didn't do anything. But that didn't, they didn't really care. We found the DC police department had failed to follow a critical part of a two year old law known as the NEAR Act, designed to better track stop and frisk in the district to protect against racial bias by police officers. After our report, the ACLU DC, Black Lives Matter DC, and Stop Police Terror Project DC filed a lawsuit against Police Chief Peter Newsham, Mayor Mariel Bowser, and Deputy Mayor for Public Safety Kevin Donahue to hold the city accountable. Hi, Chief Newsham. Hi, hi, sir. What's your name? Uh, Eric Flack, okay. WUSA. Chief Newsham wasn't interested in talking about stop and frisk with us. But we can't work with you. I'm sorry. Okay, can you just tell me if this video I think is inappropriate? I think well, I disagree with everything you said, but what I just want to know is if this is an acceptable way to frisk somebody. But less than two months after our first report aired, Newsham admitted to D.C. Council the police department was in fact guilty of failing to follow that law requiring it to better track stop and frisk by its officers. To the extent there has been a delay in this data piece and not a, a complete understanding of the, uh, the necessary infrastructure changes that would be required, uh, we're guilty. D.C. Council has now funded a half million dollar plan to finally collect comprehensive stop and frisk data. But that system won't be up and running until next summer, meaning incidents like that stop and frisk in front of Nook's Barbershop still are not getting the comprehensive review required under the NEAR Act. Go that way, go that way. Leaving tensions between police and some parts of our community at a breaking point. And that's really what these hearings are about. It's trying to give people a chance to share their personal experience and possibly even press police to try and find a different way to work with this community so we stop having ugly scenes like the ones that we've seen in those cell phone videos. If you are not signed up to speak, you can come down here still and sign up. It's going to get started fairly soon. It's a hard out at 8.30. You do not have to give your name. Cameras will be turned away from any speaker who does not want their identity shown. This is supposed to be a safe place for this people for people in this community to share their experiences with police. Reporting live from the Deanwood Recreation Center, Eric Flack, WUSA 9. Of course, many will leave there wanting to know if they are going to be treated differently starting today. That's a clear, uh, a clear question people have uh, questions about and they want answers to. Right now, you can watch a live stream of that public meeting there in the Deanwood Recreation Center on WUSA9.com. You'll also find our entire series of reports on our website. It's called DC Police Stop and Frisk. And we'll have more on DC Police and the community they serve tonight at 7 on Off Script. We are devoting the entire newscast to that topic.